Hey there. It's Warren. This is Thomas Haffey at MUW. I wanted to take a few minutes and talk to you about consumer behavior, and in particular, how a business uh, wants consumers to behave to focus in on the value that that business and its products, its service, its offerings have in order to succeed in the marketplace. Well, first, as, as marketers, entrepreneurs, business managers, however you want to label it, because they're all tied together, um, we have to think about the ways that we are going to connect with potential consumers because they're they aren't actual consumers until they what consume our goods or services or offerings right but the potential consumers we're trying to get to we're going to do that from a marketing perspective in a lot of different ways first of all the four P's of marketing themselves product price place promotion the product itself has to be good quality, well made, the right color, the right size, whatever it is we're trying to sell to them, the product has to match to the consumer, right? Then pricing wise, it has to be priced well for the marketplace, um, in line with competitors, in line with uh, expectations, not too high, not too low, depending on if it's trying to be a, uh, a low cost offering, a value kind of offering, or if it's trying to be a prestige product, it's going to be a higher price line. Um, as far as place, it's going to be dealing with distribution. Is that uh, store conveniently located so that we're going to drive to them versus driving across town to a competitor or is that restaurant located you know in the busy shopping center so that we'll get done shopping and then go eat there for dinner things like that is the website easy to use is the store easy to navigate those are all place distribution decisions and lastly promotion in the four piece side how is it that we're actually promoting the product, the offering that we're trying to sell to them? A lot of that might deal with advertising. Say we want to do TV ads. Well, the problem with TV nowadays is DVRs especially. People can fast forward right through the commercials to skip ahead or just change the channel. That's always been an option. Or now with, with Netflix or Hulu, they might not even have advertisements in the first place. That's a, a big deal for marketers. If we can't even get their ads out there, then how are we going to get consumers to care about it? Well, how about uh, radio ads? What if we uh, are trying to get in the drive time, people commuting to work or com coming home from work? The problem with that is we've already got a distracted audience. They should be focusing on the road, right? They should be focusing on the environment around them, not necessarily putting their full attention to your radio ad. And even if you do, if it's a music station or if it's a talk station, once the commercials come on, people have the choice to listen, to not care at all and just mentally tune it out, or they can literally turn this radio off, turn it down, change to another station. So again, hard to get that attention. Or the billboard as they're driving again. There's a billboard on the side of the highway. For one thing, people have to see it, they have to care, they have to put cognitive effort to look at it, try and read it, try and understand it, all in a very split second, because they shouldn't be trying to read it as it goes behind them, right? Because that's not safe, again, because it's a distracted environment. Plus, we can only put so much information, one big picture, a big headline, something like that. We can't exactly spell out a spec sheet about our product on a billboard, because nobody's going to have the time to read it. Well, how about just personal selling? about the sales force at your car lot or at your restaurant, the servers, or your um, factory uh, rep selling the new machines to the product, whatever it might be. Again, how are we connecting with consumers? And then customer service. Customer service does and should fall under the marketing kind of department because customer service should be paramount to any competitive business. How are we going to satisfy the customer give them what they want, meet their expectations, and preferably go beyond that. Delight them, satisfy them, make them happy to do business with us. All of those are trying to get a connection with the customer because we're trying to get them to notice us, to pay attention to us, to our business, to our brand, to our product. Once we get their attention, it's a matter of the personal psychology and perception of that consumer, whether or not they what? They care. Just because we got them to watch our commercial doesn't mean they're going to buy the product. Getting them to care is very important. After we spent millions of dollars designing our new car over the last few years, research and development, engineering and all of that, and then say we spent another $4 million putting out a Super Bowl ad commercial, does the consumer care? Oof. If they don't even care, they're certainly not going to buy the product. If we can get their attention and get them to care, then we've got something going. 
um, that's where value, at the core of everything, the value really starts to come in. The value of any purchase or exchange or consumption is at the core of will people buy it. The personal decision of each individual consumer about what is valuable. Marketers, entrepreneurs, business leaders, we don't get to decide whether or not a consumer views our product as valuable. We can set the price or have a big say in setting the price, how much it costs the consumer, but the cost and the value are two different things. Related, but they are not the same. Value, defined very simply, is what you get minus what you give up to get it. So, the things that you get, the benefit side, is literally, of course, the product itself. The, the meal at the restaurant, the, the new computer that you can you know, search online and, and browse Facebook and all that. That's the benefit. That's the product itself. But also convenience. Again, was it better to go to this restaurant or this gas station because it's more convenient? That's a benefit that we're willing to pay for sometimes. Um, the emotions. Do we like this product? Does it make us feel good? Does the haagen make us feel better after a hard day at work or at school or in our relationships or whatever it might be? Um, is there a prestige tied to the product? Am I buying the Rolex watch or the, the Porsche or, or the Armani suit because I want a certain prestige for using that product maybe? Yeah, certainly. There's emotional ties in there. How about the experience? I go to the fine dining restaurant. I ride the roller coaster for an experience. Experience, right? Emotional ties. Um, maybe feelings of nostalgia. People buy on eBay the toys they played with when they were younger. People download old music on iTunes because they maybe want to experience the things that their parents or grandparents listen to. They watch old TV shows on Nick at Night because they want what? Nostalgia. It's a benefit. It's something they're willing to give up something else for in order to get that benefit. So what might we give up? Of course, money. For making purchases, there's always money involved, right? For the most part. <coughs> Excuse me. But also time, effort, the shopping, the searching, the driving, the, the spending time on Amazon, the waiting on FedEx to deliver our package, all of that is a time and effort side, apart from necessarily the cost, the money side of it that we put into it. So the individual consumer, over and over, every day, day in and day out, is making choices choices about what they feel are valuable options for them. Consciously, sometimes not completely consciously, but they're making decisions about the products, the services, the offerings that they feel are worthy, are valuable to them. It's worth whatever they got to give up is worth less than what they get out of it, right? Every time you see a display in Walmart, it's a, it's a new flavor of potato chips or it's a, a new size of laundry detergent, every time you don't Pick it up, put it in your buggy, check it out, take it home. You have made the decision that that product at this moment in time, to me personally as a consumer, is not valuable. It is not worth getting whatever it is that's being offered to me. It's not worth what I have to give up, the money, the time, the effort, or whatever it might be. The lost opportunity, because if I spend money and time on this product, I don't have that money and time to spend on another product. Ah lost opportunities. That's something we give up sometimes. The money you pay to go to college, the time you spend in college, it's time you could be doing what? Working, traveling, whatever it might be. It's a lost opportunity, right? So there's cognitive reasons why and there are affect reasons why. Cognitive cognition refers to the thinking, the logic, the reasoning why we choose to do and not do things. Affect deals with the emotion, the feeling side of what we feel like doing or not doing certain things. An emotional side. Do I like this brand? Do I like this celebrity? That's an emotion side. Versus, do I think that the price on the shelf is a good price for this product? That's a cognition. That's, that's a, a, not a feeling side. That's a logic, a reasoning side. <coughs> Both feelings and thinking are going to come into play in most decisions, a lot of decisions for most consumers. That goes back to perception again. How do consumers perceive our offerings? Do they perceive them as valuable to them? Getting people to pay attention to us is hard. Even if they do, are they the right consumer? Do they have the right personality, lifestyle, motivations, frame of reference, 
that they will buy what we are trying to sell them. That's an important thing. We might use a giant inflatable gorilla at our car lot to get people to notice our cars as they drive by, right? Or we might hire a certain celebrity and pay them a lot of money to be in our commercials as a spokesperson. Um, we might advertise our, our new shampoo in a, a women's magazine like, like Red Book. Or we might advertise our, our uh, new special edition shotgun in, in Gardens and Gun because we're trying to focus in on what? On a target market, maybe. We're trying to concentrate our marketing on the consumers we think have the greatest chance of paying attention to us, caring, and buying. Um, deciding that we are a valuable option for them. <coughs> Excuse me. Business to be successful needs a market that cares about it. Not necessarily about that business, but sometimes we can get loyalty. We can get people that care about us so vehemently, like, like McDonald's or like Apple, like Southwest. People that care so much about the brand, they want to support it above others. But normally, it's we get them to care about us because they think we are valuable to them. The products, the services we're offering them are a valuable option for them. We have to convince consumers to behave, consumer behavior, convince the consumers to behave the way we want to. <coughs> Perform those activities that satisfy the needs. Hunger, shelter, safety, belongingness, self-actualization, all those Maslow kinds of needs especially. How do we get them to realize those needs, satisfy those needs with what we are selling? That's the core part of consumer behavior, psychologically, perception-wise, value-seeking activities. Hopefully they seek out value and they find your store at the end of the day. Okay? Thanks. See you later.